Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Since 1949, Ruger has embodied the spirit of hunting in America. Ruger firearms are built to deliver the reliable and accurate performance that seasoned veterans demand and new hunters can trust. At Ruger, we believe that hunting is about more than just the thrill of the chase. It's about the freedom and opportunity that come with it. This is our heritage, and this is Ruger. Hey, you guys, thank you all for joining me for this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. I'm your host, Christy Titus, and I'm here with my good friend, Kevin Gian from Wilderness Athlete. And now you guys are a podcast partner. Yeah, absolutely. We, we, I think that just happened like a few weeks ago, right? Like last week. Like last week. Like last week. We're like, hey, let's do this. Let's I'm, go all I'm in. I'm kind of out of the loop with some of the some of the stuff you know Ben and Peter want to do but I think that's a great idea yeah but that's just because you just had like a baby and you have all this stuff sure. going on yeah a little grace yeah a little oh grace oh my gosh I know yeah she keeps our hands full but she's she's just so much fun well, she's a joy I think we haven't podcasted in two years yeah we were gonna try and tack right and then I was yeah. sick and yeah. I totally bailed on you yeah. and I felt bad I was like Oh, I, I I was like, oh, I got to do it. But I was like, I'm going to be the worst no. podcast guest ever because I was okay. just feeling like death. And uh, But yeah, it's been a while. It's been, yeah, because it was here. We podcasted here at the WA booth like the first year I had mm-hmm. the podcast. So it's been mm-hmm. a good long while. And so much has changed for you. You literally yes. got married. Mm-hmm. You had a baby. Mm-hmm. All these great, well, you didn't have the baby. <laughs> yeah. <I> was, Thankfully, yeah. <laughs> Courtney did. Right. Uh, and we love Courtney and we yeah. love that you guys are married because you're yeah. like the perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Couple and we love it too. It's been yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah, you're so Courtney is is she considered like owner? Of oh Wilderness yeah, athlete? yeah, yeah. She's uh, an owner of Wilderness Athlete and Outdoorsman's. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess by some paperwork, I am as well. But you know, it's it's really we, we've done a good job in the last couple of years at making sure our team is just a little bit more. I guess homogenized, you know, yeah. it's one big family, one big team. Literally a big yeah. family. Yeah, yeah, it is. And it, the, yeah. what I love about WA is like you don't have like this insatiable turnover that a lot of companies have where right. it's like the internal mechanisms of what makes a brand, in my opinion, is the people. Yeah. 100%. And you guys have such a solid group of people. And it's, Thank you. it's yeah. um, literally a family, like yeah. from outdoorsmen's to wilderness athlete. and Yeah, and Western Hunter, we we. Yeah, we we really do. Um, like you said, it's really all about the people. And if I'd rather, yeah, I think we all would rather, you know, keep working with people we enjoy yeah. and are of like mind, and that we have a, a shared passion with, mm-hmm. and and grow at a steady level, yeah. than you know, take on a whole lot of people, kind of outsiders, and potentially grow a heck of a lot faster. Yeah. And so we have a lot of fun with what we do. Um, like we, you know, travel to shows like this all together. So it's, you know, outdoorsman's wilderness athlete mm-hmm. and like the Western Hunter crew. Western Hunter doesn't have a booth here, but no. we will at, at the Western Hunt Expo in Salt yeah. Lake City. But, uh, and, and then that's even kind of a another team as well because mm-hmm. a lot of those guys are, you know, out of the office. Um, but it, it's got a great feel to it. We, I know. And yeah. I used to have my booth across from your guys. And then I didn't do a booth for like a year because yeah. of COVID. And then when I came back in, I couldn't get the spot. And yeah. I got... I got divorced from them. <laughs> yeah. Expo, but that's okay. Well, we moved too. This yeah. year will be a new location for us in, in kind of a, a different section. So yeah. it'll be a learning experience. We've got a new booth layout. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, it should be fun. And here at Sheep Show, you guys have such a great presence. Um, the move-in crew is all powered by WA, which yeah. is awesome. Mm-hmm. And you guys are also sponsoring a much-needed hangover cure for. <laughs> he, you guys are going to be handing out hydrate and recover and rescues yeah. at the backpack races because mm-hmm. that tends to be the evening here that people get a little rowdy. Oh yeah. And the next day, there's going to be a lot of uh, weary individuals going home. (laughs) Yeah. Well, we're always, you know, as you know, like, it feels like we're the first stop on, 
you know, uh, Friday morning, yeah. Saturday morning when people are pretty hungover. So yeah. it just made sense. We're always at the pack race anyways, yeah. you know, cheering it on and getting rowdy. Oh, it's so, so fun. Yeah, we, uh, yeah. we've got one of our really good friends and longtime just friends is Mike Iazzi, and he's really, so, you know, helped us out with just making yeah. the most out of our, our time here at, mm -hmm. at, at the Sheep Show. And so again, the Sheep Show is like a family, too. It like is. Like, WA is a family, but Sheep Show... I mean, this is a family here, too. Yeah. And I I really feel like when we come here every year, it's that family reunion. Mm. Like, it's a, a different vibe than some of the other shows. Um, and th what I love about the people here is we all look out for each other. So um, if somebody's in need or for a hand up or something, totally. you know, like there's someone to bend over backwards to help you like the move-in crew here right that you guys sponsored the move-in crew they're all volunteers so yogi and i pull up with a truck and trailer or last year for example i came by myself because yogi was finishing a hunt and i have half a dozen guys with carts helping me offload my booth and it's just um it's really remarkable to have that all hands on deck yep. Uh, and everybody's hearts in the same place and totally. we're all here for conservation and, yeah. um, and hunting. And, um, that's, I mean, that's really the backbone of wilderness athlete as well. Hence also the epic name. <laughs> um, and I met you guys like I was, I think 30 and I'm, I'll, I'm 44 this year. No way. So that's it's a, that's a, a long, long time. time. That's a long time. And, um, I remember I was doing a, a spring bear hunt and I had your guys's, um, bars and they were really hard and I can't you had the mountain berry <laughs> yeah those are like the original ones yeah, yeah and I don't remember the other flavors like chocolate chip or something mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. and hydrate and recover and that was kind of like your guys's first introduction but your heart is really in the hunting community and yes you know what I love about the WA family is you guys are all hunters and you did you did some epic hunts this year I did yeah no I've had a pretty awesome well I guess 23 was incredible um, you had a baby and you went on all these epic hunts. Yeah, I had talk, a baby. Talk and about Alaska. <clears throat> gosh. Yeah, well, that was my first time going to Alaska. Like, my, I've never even been on like vacation or like yeah. a drunken bed or anything, you know. <laughs> and uh, I, I every, every time I would tell people that, they'd be like, you've never been to Alaska, you know, with how much you love this and yeah. that and thing. And, you know, I, I, I hadn't. And the opportunity presented itself. Um, I got invited by Chris and... You know, a group of guys had already been planning this trip for a couple of years. Yeah. And it had always been a bucket list hunt of mine, but um, it just was always hard from the timing just never worked out, you know. So uh, one of the guys that was on this trip, uh, Matt, he dropped out, luckily. I got to thank him for that. And I yeah, took thanks, a spot. Matt. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> and uh, I took a spot. And so it was uh, it was Chris uh, and Mark, so my brother-in-law and father-in-law, uh, Levi, who is another one of our cameraman yeah. he also works for you know western hunter outdoorsman he's part of the family uh and then nate simmons uh and then one of our really really good b buddies uh, jeremy ennis uh, so it was just an awesome crew and it was like truly the most amazing adventure of i've ever been on yeah. like adventurous most adventure of, of my lifetime um from just the travel like yeah. getting there on all those planes uh we did a charter boat trip um and that was, you know, wild, you know, just flying in on one of those little prop planes into the bay where you're going to be hunting off of was just it's a surreal experience. Very surreal. Yeah. 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 I mean, Alaska itself was just so much to take in in the beginning just because of how cool it was. And then we got to Kodiak. That was mind blowing. Uh, and we actually didn't get to take off the day we were supposed to because we had some pretty nasty weather and, yeah. and wind. And, um, and I'm glad, you know, I was glad that these pilots weren't going to chance it you know they need prime weather to fly in and i wasn't going to question and you're that. a new dad and a family oh, man and you want to be yeah. careful oh, you know sure. of course yeah it was a different type of hunt for me for that yeah. reason alone it was like i have so much know, going on so much home. to lose yeah. yeah you know when you're when you're in your 20s and you've, you're just a single guy doing stuff like you don't think twice about taking certain chances yeah. and it just makes you more grateful and appreciative of like the things that are around you and the moments mm -hmm. that you, you do get to have so yeah it, it was <coughs> truly just an all-around incredible experience um <coughs> right before we right before we actually went on this trip was they passed that new limit on non-residents for oh. um how many bucks you can take so you can only shoot one deer a yeah. year and, and prior it was always three uh, deer a year and that's kind of what all of us were super pumped about i mean not that, that was like the only thing but you know i wanted to take my bow shoot a bow a deer with my bow and my rifle but when you had just one, you know, that was, that kind of changes your, your approach. Yeah. So, um, 
you know, we made the best of it. We killed three amazing deer. I killed my buck on the first day. Awesome. Um, yeah, it was just a no-brainer. It was a really awesome four, four by four that we saw as soon as we hit the shore. Uh, hustled up the mountain, which was a lot of work, and mm -hmm. made it happen. And then it just, the trip just got better from there. Yeah. Yeah, got better from there. And that's, you know, that's one of the reasons we moved to Wyoming is so that we can do more of these epic experiences with our family. You know, like mm. my husband being a foreigner, you know, <laughs> having the opportunity to hunt for him, it was just, you know, he's European and, and just getting tags has been so difficult. But, um, but I mean, being with your family, being a field with your family, like that is what, I mean, that's the driving force of the entire hunting industry. That's what yeah. we're all there for is to be with our friends and family and to be able to go on these hunts and get through inclement weather and get through overcoming adversity, climbing these mountains. And, you know, like there was one vessel that makes it happen. That's our body. Yes. And that's what I really love about WA is, is you guys, um, you know, you're there to support us so that we can do these things with the people we love and we can create these memories and, and that we have a nice long life. So we have lots of time Absolutely. to do it yeah. in, you know, and there's so much to be said for that, especially, you know, with you being a new dad this year, I'm sure you really appreciate, um, now probably more than ever taking care of yourself. Oh gosh. Yeah. It's been a paradigm shift for sure. I mean, like, like you said, it, really what it's about is just maximizing your enjoyment of yeah, life. the outdoors and life. And for, for us and for a lot of people, even if they're not a hunter, you know, I think the most alive you ever feel is when you're in the outdoors. 100%. And, you know, like after a trip like Kodiak, the things that I'll remember the most and that I remember now and then in 10 years from now, the things that I look on most were those really tough moments of that hunt when mm -hmm. the weather was super rough, mm -hmm. when the terrain was kicking my ass, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's that type two fun that as you sticks with you. Yeah, so <laughs> literally, type you know, two fun. the more you can, you know, kind of, uh, semi enjoy that or yeah. just kind of thrive through that. I think the, the more you're able to enjoy it and yeah, you know, like now my, 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 my focus in life or my paradigm has shifted towards just longevity, yeah. making sure I can do this as long as I can. I've got a lot of healthy older men around me that are good examples yeah. of just some, you know, core values of just healthy routines, healthy diet, just doing the basics often or is really what it takes. Well, um, Chris, yeah. your father-in-law changed his lifestyle like what, five years ago? Yeah, maybe a little more than that, but it seems, yeah, about five about years five ago. About five years maybe, ago yeah. and he shed a ridiculous amount of pounds. Yeah. He does his own garden. Bless his wife's heart, <laughs> your mother-in-law. And yeah. I'm sorry, I don't know her name. Carla. Yeah. Carla. Mm -hmm. She literally does her own garden at home and they don't use pesticides. Yeah. Um, and they don't use weed control, like chemical weed control. So she's yeah. out there with her hands in the dirt, weeding and taking care of like produce. And um, like this whole movement, this health shift in this paradigm shift of what's in the grocery store, grab and go convenience to really kind of giving the best for ourselves has been really remarkable. Um, and yeah. you guys see that with your whole family. Like mm -hmm. it's been crazy for me, like outside in looking in, it's been very inspirational too, because, you know, Chris is a like serious badass. Like yeah. this man is oh, out yeah. there just crushing the mountain mm -hmm. and I would say one of the most respected Western hunters in the yeah. world. Yeah. And you know, he's not 25 anymore. Neither are we. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, no, you know right. what I mean? Exactly. Like it just goes to show you what you're, you know, really capable of. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it, did this hunt, like this is your, like you, you say first big like destination hunt. Did mm -hmm. this change like how you viewed what you're doing in the gym, like from a training standpoint? Um, yes, yes and no. I mean, yes, it did from a, you know, how actually, how difficult that terrain was. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't, I mean, I've always heard like hiking around on the alders and the salmon berries and on some of that stuff is very, uh, it's very taxing. Yeah. And it really, really was. Because stuff's pulling you back as you're trying to push oh, forward, gosh. especially like, when you're trying to climb, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, constantly. And, or there's ground that's just giving with every mm -hmm. step. And so you're just really, it's just sucking up your energy. So that was a big that was a big struggle. There are a lot of Americans that understand the value of hunting, but we all know that right now, national support of hunting is extremely volatile. It seems that with every passing day, our voice is diminished and the court of public opinion is not effectively hearing our side. We need advocates working on our behalf in Washington, D.C. to defend our freedom to hunt. 
And thankfully, when we need it the most, we have that advocate in Safari Club International. SCI's world headquarters are located in Washington, D.C., just blocks from the United States Capitol, which means that SCI is on the ground with our congressional leaders and federal agencies on our behalf, on behalf of the hunting community. SCI has an active political presence in all 50 states through their extensive chapter network and government affairs staff. If you have ever wondered why you should be a member of SCI, you shouldn't wonder anymore. Join us in the fight to defend hunting. Go to safariclub.org to learn more. I got really sick, like almost in the beginning of the trip. And so I was kind of fighting this, like just nasty cold, like mm -hmm. almost the whole time. And that in and of itself too was, I think, kind of making me take a better look at just how I take care of my immune system. Just yeah. make, and, and you know, it's tough when you've got like a newborn at home. She actually just prior to that had just started her, her like daycare, you know? So, yeah. bring her so she's home. bringing everything. Right. Home. Yeah. yeah. She's a little mm -hmm. germ of yes. factory. Yes. She's, she's, she, yeah, she's exactly. So yeah, it changed. Poor baby Grace. That. We love you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're a germy we, we baby. Do, we sure. love you. <laughs> yeah. I think I caught a little bit of a germ right before I left for this trip, but I'm, yeah. I'm fine. But, um, yeah, I think moreover, I'm, you know, I'm 34 now. And so my focus on how I train and like the way I'm looking at my health yeah. is definitely shifting. Um, you know, it's not so much about just the aesthetics of having, you know, big shoulders and a six pack abs mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm tend to focus more on just the foundation and yeah. avoiding injury or, you know, kind of nurturing some areas that I have injured in the past and just kind of the foundation, mm -hmm. the stuff that I can do every day. Cause you know, a lot of people get into some sort of fitness routine or they train for something and you can get really buried into that and, yeah. you know, for you know, three, four weeks, six months at a time. But, uh, you know, it tends to be there's a lot of hot and cold, you know, off yeah. and on there. And, you know, I'm really more interested in right now some of the, just the, those routines that I can just carry on with in my life through the long haul. And yeah. things that are always going to be there. Um, I like that yeah. word you used, the longevity factor. Yeah. Like what is yeah. sustainable? What is uh, realistic for like and not a fad, like not a flash in the pan, like something right. that you can really maintain and, and live with mm -hmm. instead of trying to force yourself through. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that's it. And like, honestly, so like you were mentioning, like, like Carla and, and Chris, they're, they're great role models in that regard. I mean, mm -hmm. they have an, a tremendous diet, you know, I mean, it, it's sometimes. Is Chris still doing like that paleo kind of? No, Because he was so doing like really high protein, high fat. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean. It's still mostly that way. Yeah. I think it's, I wouldn't put it in the box of calling it paleo, yeah. you know, and I think, you know, you could probably use terms like being fat adaptive, but I think he would agree. And it's how I feel as well is just wanting to have a really healthy relationship with food yeah. in, in that you can have some strict um, approaches to what you eat and when you're eating it. But then all of a sudden, if you want to have a night of eating a bunch of ice cream and drinking yeah. a little too much whiskey, that doesn't just throw you off the rails. No. You know, you've got to uh, be able to, you know, live in this modern society we know what kevin's cheat time. is now <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> well ice cream is his thing I, if you give that guy a, the freaking pine ice cream it's He's gone gonna di oh, make yeah. it disappear. absolutely <laughs> that's so funny but uh yeah so he they, they 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 do a time restricted thing and and courtney and i actually do that quite a bit as well we, fasting we try so you to. do like a 16 hour non-eating window like eight hour eating right. window yeah so we'll start eating at like 10 a.m and cut off any eating and drinking at, at uh, or six, six you know just depends. It's it's tough sometimes with work and with Grace, you know, just making sure obviously she's eating and going to bed on mm -hmm. time and then, you know, by the time we like it's six is tough, especially when you get off work at five and You gotta rush home and eat. You gotta rush home and prep dinner, you know, and we're not picking up fast food or that kind of stuff. So we're trying to yeah. you know, eat just you know, wild game and vegetables and just mm -hmm. and cook everything and so that can get tough. Um I think it's about progress, not perfection, you know, yeah. and, and uh we're just always trying to just make you know, a little bit of progress. And mm. if we fall off the wagon for a few days and have a couple weird meals and, you know, whatever, get over it, just make them better mm -hmm. the next day. Um, I think that's our focus. And I'd say, you know, Chris and Carla, I, I don't know what the hell I'd call their diet other than Super it's inten clean. clean and intentional, you know, yeah. there's thought into it. They don't, um, eat a lot of sugar. That's one thing for sure is they mm -hmm. cut out a lot of sugar. And so I'm always trying to cut out as much sugar as I can, which it's tough, but I'm not a yeah. sugar eater. <laughs> no, L I, you're lucky. No, <laughs> I, I don't like candy at all. Oh, and man. I don't like chocolate. Yeah. 
Um, so I don't have any issues with that. My thing has been portion control. Yeah, yeah. Of like the quant, I will out eat my husband, like, like, and and now I'm I'm I've been really working on eating like half of what he eats instead of yeah. one and a half times what he eats <laughs> because I really like to eat massive quantities of food. Mm -hmm. And so that's been for me something that I've had to work on being very intentional of <clears throat> coming from a bodybuilding background where I weighed and measured my food. And if it was, you know, and I was on a time limit. So sure. I was eating every three, three and a half hours tops mm -hmm. and in, towards contests, like every two hours. So you're constantly looking at the clock, like, okay, 15 more minutes, I get to eat food. Like, I mean, it's like neurotic, right? It completely crazy. And, but going from that to, okay, well, it's, it's been three hours. I can have another light snack or I can eat this now. I don't need to eat as much as my husband's eating. I can eat half of what he's eating. And then I can still enjoy eating like what I would say, like feeling like less restrictive, mm -hmm. but it's more like more of a lifestyle. It's more realistic yeah. for me to be able to maintain as no. well. Oh yeah. hundred percent. I, uh, I think, you know, I tried to, I t it tends to be, in, like most people in today's society think, and they focus on, like, if they're trying to lose weight or whatever, it's, like, <coughs> I need to eat less of this, I need to do less of that, I need yeah. to do less of this. Um, and that's, you know, in a lot of ways can be true, yeah. but I think mentally that can be challenging. And yeah. so I, I try to, for myself, um, and I try to tell myself, I just, I need to eat more protein. Well, I was I need just to getting ready to fiber, say that. Yeah. I need to drink more water, mm -hmm. need to get more sleep. And if you start focusing on those things that you get to do more of, mm -hmm. and it's more fun to do, it tends to be that that cascading effect leads to uh, less cravings yeah. for sugar, you yeah. know, less desire to stay up till 1030 at night doing, you know, watching TV, less. Well, a lot of sugar of cravings like in the afternoon or evening are attributed to a poor diet in the morning. Yeah, I believe that. So yeah. like when your blood sugar is unstable, when, when you wake up and with what you're eating in the morning, it will set the tone for how your body metabolically reacts to that in the afternoon. So if you have like ravenous sugar cravings or like energy crashes, around mm -hmm. three or four in the afternoon it's probably i mean you could almost directly tie it to what you're doing in the morning oh yeah like yeah yeah habitually like mm -hmm. if you feel like that consistently what are you doing in the morning and it's time to evaluate that because that is going to tie into how you feel in the afternoon oh sure um, yeah and that's just that's just the way our biomechanics work our yep. biology mm -hmm. works in our body and so like when i was doing nutrition consulting if people are like man i'm so tired in the afternoon it's like well how are you starting your morning what are you doing you know Hello, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> There's our buddy right there. Um, so it's it's really it, it like, and I always tell people, food really functions as a drug in your body. Yeah. And you really can feel the rush mm -hmm. of sugar. So if you go without drinking for you know six or eight months and you have a drink, you're like, whoa, I feel that, and it hits you really mm -hmm. hard. But if you're drinking every day, yeah, and you're over indulging in alcohol every day you don't really feel that first drink no you yeah. like have a drink and you're like oh yeah i had a drink no big deal i'm good but if you go six or eight months without it and you have that first drink you're like whoa you feel it sugar's the same way yeah and so i think really like metabolically psychs from a psychological standpoint this is how you get addicted to things like sugar is because when you do it on a consistent level your brain and your body becomes used to and almost dependent on that um, chemical endorphin release that you get from sure. that insulin. And then when you go without it, your body's like, whoa, I want this back. And so it's really hard to break that. But then when you go off it for a while and then you go back on sugar, you're like, oh man, I feel like crap. Right. Yeah. Like just, and you feel it. But you, when you, when you're, you numb your body to these poisons we put in ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Well, absolutely. It's, <coughs> it becomes thoughtless. Like you're not yes. really in, in intentional about what you're eating. And th th that's why that eight, that time restricted thing has been really easy for me and not easy but helpful for yeah. me and Courtney because it's uh it, it's actually the most simplistic way to kind of go about a better eating routine because you just you give yourself a time yeah. slot you know 10 to 6 or 10 to 7 or you know you can kind of start uh narrowing that gap as mm -hmm. you get better at it but it tended to be for us if you wait till 10 in the morning to eat and you stopped eating at 6 that night what you crave isn't a donut. It isn't a bagel. No. It's protein. You want yeah. eggs. So like the first and last meal we'd want, and I mean, it's not even just what we'd be eating because we knew it was better for us. You just crave nutritionally dense food. So yeah. vegetables and meats and things that are actually going to produce energy or valuable nutrients to your body. And, you know, for me and like a lot of people, the snacking, the sugar, the crappy cravings tended to come Go at away. night too. When you're like up watching TV, you know, you're just bored of eating. 
Um, and, and there's just nothing, there's no ground, the ground being made up mm -hmm. there. It's just, it, you're, you're just kind of thoughtlessly consuming mm -hmm. calories that are empty for you. Um, and so it's, it, it's really kind of, everyone's different, you know, everyone's got to kind of figure out what works for them, uh, mentally. Um, but I think something simplistic that you can start with, that's right. get a routine with, and then you're like, oh, that's just kind of part of how I am living my life. That's a great place to start and, and just progress from there. But you know, it, it, like you said, it's a lifestyle. So we're not looking at like, what can we do for 30 days or 14 days? Mm -hmm. This is the rest of your life, you know, because it's, it's your only life. And so you better, you know, just take it seriously now. Hey, you guys, if you're like me, you are totally dependent on OnX Hunt for nearly everything from hunting, navigating backcountry roads, even real estate. But being an elite member with OnX has so many benefits that you guys are going to want to take advantage of if you're not already doing so. For example, you're going to have access to all 50 states plus Canada with tons of valuable resource, landowner information, and you're also going to get added benefits like draw odds with top ret that will help you with all of your application seasons and benefits through hunting full magazine and to boot you guys they've got tons of great specials through partners like silencer central where if you're an on x elite member you really benefit from those partnerships so if you guys aren't a member i encourage you go online to the on hunt website use code wild 20 at checkout and you're going to save 20 percent you're going to love being being an Onyx Hunt Elite member. Two of the things you touched on, the first is protein and the second is fiber. So I want to talk a little bit about fiber. Like for me, and I think a lot of people, you don't really think about the value of fiber. And the job of fiber in your body is partially, the benefits I should say, is it helps slow the digestion time of your food. Mm -hmm. So the, the amount of time it takes for the contents of your stomach to empty and you to get all those nutrients out of food when you eat a high fiber diet is slowed down. So you know, one thing I really notice for me is when I have a high fiber diet is I feel full longer. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's really important you know, it helps stabilize, but blood sugar, sure. um, it, fiber does so many great things for your body. Plus it helps your digestive system as an overall whole be healthier. And, um, the second thing is protein. Like it's really hard to ingest enough protein. Yeah. And I don't think people do, you know, do enough protein justice, especially like for me, my motto in life is a meal really doesn't exist unless it has meat. <laughs> yeah. And if meat doesn't have a face, it doesn't count. Like, if it, yeah. like if these, you know, animal derived proteins to me, just, they don't have a full amino acid profile. It's mm -hmm. not the same thing in your body. And so like protein supplementation, um, like if you're not meal prepping and making chicken and sure. I mean, how many people are really doing that not anymore? Enough. It's not, not enough, right? It's less really than, difficult to less do. Than people who think they are we like especially in this uh group of people here we're all hunters we're all generally meat eaters yeah and i think the assumption by a lot of you know men mostly that i talk to often they're like oh i have a freezer full of meat yeah i eat meat all the time it's not the same <clears throat> it's not it's not the same and it's also not usually the case uh yeah. for some people now some guys yeah that's what they eat as their staple and they are consuming a lot of red meat and that's great but there's also a lot of people who they see it in their freezer they they had a you know really good fall but it's not doing anything for your body in your freezer. Mm -hmm. And if you're actually consuming that, like, f part of it, you know, mm -hmm. and that 20-ish calories, three meals a day, then you're doing a great job. Mm -hmm. But, it, you know, it tends to be that that's not always the convenient thing to do. No. Um, you crave other variety in your diet as well. So, you know, yeah, like you said, like a protein shake that's well-rounded in, yeah. in the protein, you know, sources uh, and has another good, you know, set of profile to, like, the macronutrients and such. That's super helpful in just being convenient and that you can be consistent with. Because, yeah. I mean... I, I know me personally, it's, it's tough for me to have uh, venison steaks, you know, for lunch and dinner on a consistent basis or also have a healthy amount of meats and such in my breakfast. Like I wish I had that kind of time and energy to do that for myself all the time. But, yeah. um, you know, I like variety in my diet just like anybody else. So, yeah. you know, having something that you can rely on to keep yourself consistent is, yeah, it's invaluable. Yeah. Well, yeah. and having a variety of protein in your diet there's every meat has a different amino acid profile. Mm -hmm. yes. So there's nine amino acids and they're all kind of at a different level on those amino acid profiles of positives. And, you know, some have stronger profiles than others in different areas. So if you have a 
diet that's varied mm -hmm. or a lot of variety, that really helps ensure that you're going to get that and not have those macro, uh, macronutrient um, deficiencies. Sure. So, but it's hard to like, oh, well, I haven't had fish in two weeks. Like, oh, when was the last time I had fish? Let me think about this. <laughs> Am yeah. I eating fish? Like, it's, yeah. I'm like, I'm a super red meat eater. Mm -hmm. um, Yogi and I do game meat almost every night with veggies like you and yeah. Courtney. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> How often do I eat fish? Yeah. Very rarely. I rarely. mean, I don't, yeah, it's not yeah. like it's, I, I don't go fishing very mm -hmm. often, mm -hmm. yeah, same ever. Yeah. So, I mean, for me to like go to the store and be like, I have to really consciously be like, I need to eat fish. I need to do these things. Um, but I th protein is just one of those ingredients. It's hard to get enough of, you, you know, a lot of people, you know, the baseline is said one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Mm -hmm. And so, and if you're trying to put on muscle, uh, which muscle management, especially as we age, becomes yeah. really critical. You're not quite there yet, with the muscle management <laughs> yeah, worry. But like women, yeah. um, I've been listening because I'm over 40 now. I'm in my mid-40s. And I've been listening to a lot of different studies on women as they age because I've been through a lot of changes in the last couple of years and, and um, really pushed me into the importance of creatine supplementation. Mm -hmm. And like when I was in my 20s and I did bodybuilding, of course I took creatine. I was like, oh yeah, it's going to help me. My muscles, you know, have all the ability to repair. And I really kind of took it for granted. Like this is a gym thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah. creatine is twice as effective in women as it is men in performance enhancement. Yeah. So mm -hmm. women that take creatine for 10 straight weeks have a 15% increase in performance versus men it's only at like 7%. Which blows my mind because all of these dudes yeah. buy creatine and you mm -hmm. never hear women on topic for this. And yeah. it's really important for women with muscle management. Once we hit 40, our muscles shrink at like ridiculous rates and you know that's what attributes to these fatal falls later in life and muscle management for women is so much more important for women than than we really give it credit to and and eating enough protein sure having a diet high in creatine having lots of fiber so our gut health is good oh, taking yeah. a probiotic all of these things so that we can uptake and utilize all these right. nutrients and actually like you said have that longevity built in i have been like psycho studying <laughs> women's health you know because i really feel like my body has changed to where the last few years has been really crazy mm -hmm. like i it was everybody said well when you, you hit 40 things change so much but it's been astronomical to change and so i've really put a lot of research into it and there's so many little things that we can all do individually man these backcountry trips don't get easier no 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 they Absolutely. don't get easier Absolutely your crunchy yeah. joints and yeah i mean like yogi's in the gym yesterday he's like man my knees were crunchy <laughs> yeah, we were talking about that yesterday yeah it's just part of getting older and yeah. Uh, there's a lot of, there's so much misinformation out there and stigmas that have yeah. been around since, you know, the beginning of time, it seems like, you know, like creatines for meatheads and things yeah. like that. And, you know, like you were saying, the the benefits to to women is, is something I think that a lot of people should talk more about because it's it's not, A, it's, creatine is not just about being a gym rat and no. bulking up your muscle. Uh, creatine obviously is, is, it's something that's available and produced in your body um, as well, but as you age, that that supply of phosphocreatine is, is diminished. Mm -hmm. So being able to supplement um, in your diet is, is super critical. At a very basic level, um, you know, it hydrates your cells. Mm -hmm. And a hydrated cell is a healthy cell. Yeah. Cells have a lot of different functions from energy production to yeah. muscle recovery, elasticity. It lubricates. Yeah. It holds like a fluid in your muscles to help them yes. have like this fluid so they can repair and rebuild. Right. Yeah. And yeah, I, th there's there's varying. It's all about it's a tool, you know, mm -hmm. just like all of our supplements. I mean, supplements are just that. They're not meant to replace the core tenets of your diet and your mm -hmm. and your routine, but they're all tools and they can be used differently. You know, if 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 you're eating and training like a bodybuilder and you add creatine in there, then it's going to have a bit of a different purpose yeah. and effect than if someone's just adding, you know, three and a half ish grams to their shake every day and mm -hmm. living just a moderately active life. Like mm -hmm. there's still a lot of benefits for that person as mm -hmm. well. Um, we, like in our creatine, and we always try to do this with any of our products, you know, we, we try not to make just commodity type formulas that, that are, you know, not, there's nothing unique about them. Um, we're always looking for what are ways that we can give an edge or an added boost to these products. So like we added, um, HMB, which is, is less known, but it's an, an critical, uh, part to like your activity. So it stands for hydroxymethylbutyrate, um, which in and of itself is a metabolite of leucine. Leucine, the... Amino acid. 
It is, yeah. And it's also the It's only found in meat. It's the predominant amino acid that your muscles uh, mm -hmm. are comprised of and utilize mm -hmm. for muscle muscle energetics. Um, by supplying uh, your your system, your body with HMB, you're going to need to catabolize and pull less of that from your existing mm -hmm. muscle. It allows you to train longer. It allows mm -hmm. you to, you know, in, in a simplistic way of looking at it, it allows you to get more like 10 to 12 reps of something versus yeah. 6 to 7. Mm -hmm. um, there's just more available energy in, in your system. So it is about pushing the that level of performance. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's kind of the goes back to that mentality, whether you're 40 and you're trying to just stay active or you're in your 20s and you're trying to build muscle nothing's going to change unless you challenge yourself that's exactly so, right you know that's kind of the name of the game and i think that's kind of where on a societal level we uh, need to have a, a bit of a shift in focus is being comfortable everyone yeah. wants to be comfortable this diet is hard this training is hard um, and sometimes it is, but you're not going to ever be that person that's in shape or change your current state in life mm -hmm. by just staying in that comfortable lane, doing what you've always done. Um, there's, there's a great enough. book out there called the comfort crisis. I've heard. Yeah. I've it's not read that, great, but I've heard of that. It's yeah. a great, the guy is a brilliant man and, and our world, I mean, we went from being in a survival state every day where every day, you know, the, the, the average human is doing, you know, 20,000 steps, for example, and doing manual labor and going and getting water and our bodies are meant to move. I mean, we have feet because we're supposed to be fast and sure. mobile. Yeah. That's the way that we have evolved with time. And um, our world has become so sedentary and we are so comfortable with everything. We walk to the kitchen and we turn on the faucet and we have water. We have all these comfortable things. We go to the grocery store. We pick out the fresh produce we want. We're not actually working the earth and our hands mm -hmm. in the garden. There's not as many people hunting. There, You know, this is, this this harder lifestyle is diminished into this this, with this comfort crisis. It's a brilliant sure. way to term, you know, term, terminology. And really, like, now we're having to find a way to be active because we've yeah. made everything so comfortable around us. And now when the average person has any kind of discomfort, we instantly want to quit. Yeah. And it's this horrible mindset that's literally killing us. Yeah. It's terrible. Like, we have to become reacquainted with and and really look forward to those uncomfortable moments oh yeah 100 percent. because I mean, it's really helping us oh yeah yeah you, nothing that's ever worth like nothing that you're at least for me and everyone's different you know everyone's but like the things that i'm most proud of uh accomplishments and, and the things that i feel like have gotten me the farthest in life are the things that were challenging and hard you know the best decisions i ever made were also the hardest ones yeah and it's just that kind of natural it's a fact of life um, you know, we're constantly faced in today's world with things that are going to make it easier. There's yeah. an easy button for everything, things to make life happen quicker, uh, more comfortable. And uh, I just think it takes a little bit of a, a decision, conscious decision to, uh, you know, push against that and not just take that in stride and kind of ask yourself, do I need that little added convenience in my life? You know, yeah. do I need it to be easier, more comfortable? Um, you know, it's, it's kind of counter to a lot of the things that we do in this hunting industry because, you know, the advancements in technology are all about making gear more comfortable, yeah. you, you know, boots more comfortable, rifles easier to shoot, all these things like, you know. Gear so, that keeps you out in the elements longer, yeah. like clothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And so it is a double-edged sword, you know, because I love being comfortable and staying warm and dry as much as the next guy. Um, but I think when it comes to the way you're living on a daily basis and things that are taken away and robbing you of the opportunity to become a better person and just to be just to be better and stronger, that's where I, I put up a little bit more, you know, of my radar of like, that's mm -hmm. just not for me. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, it, it, it's tough. Like, I think it can get overcomplicated for a lot of for sometimes, depending on where you are. And this group of people, like by and large, especially a lot of folks listening to this podcast, you're so far ahead of the game. Yeah. Um, you know, if you if you like to get outdoors, you're already doing yourself a huge service. Um, most people in this room love hunting. And just being outdoors is in and of itself just mm -hmm. so therapeutic for your mindset, your mental health, your, mm -hmm. your you, you know, your your spirit. Um, that That is so valuable. But there's so many people. I just, last week, I went to uh, CES, mm -hmm. uh, which is a huge consumer electronics uh, show. And it's the, like, I think it's the largest trade show in the world, but this is all focused on technology. So TV screens and then, you know, computers, uh, AI stuff, robotics, you name it, like every electronic 
that's produced out there in the world is has a as a big expo and and it was so different from any of these expos we go to i mean a lot of these people um are in their comfort zone because they're not outside in the elements they're not mm -hmm. they're 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 indoors um the I think the world of technology as valuable as it is is it separates you from the things that make you human as well yeah. so you know walking around that trade show i see a different stature of person than mm -hmm. i do here um and i think so you know the point being just getting outdoors and, yeah. and living that kind of lifestyle you have a huge leg up um and i think like i was like we were talking about before with longevity and that legacy wanting to not lose that like mm. i want to be able to go hunting with my daughter and take her camping and backpacking and stuff when i'm you know 70 and so that that starts now that doesn't start when i'm 65. Um, i just think a lot of people don't know what they're missing no. Uh, because you grow up potentially in a very urban environment or a place where you, access to the outdoors no. is really not that easy. So you, you don't even know what you're missing. Um, so we talk about, you know, how your body gets numb to sugar. You know, mm. eating sugar every day pretty soon, you don't even realize the sugar really has an effect on you until you go without it. Being in the outdoors is the same way. If you've never been in the outdoors, you don't know the therapeutic benefit of it if you've never even stepped foot out there exactly. or had that experience. So there's, you know, there's a whole culture of our of our society and the world as a whole that lives in these urban environments that doesn't have that kind of primal connection to the outdoors mm -hmm. and, and really what it does for your soul, your mind, body, spirit, because it is really healing. And, and, and I think once you're out there and you connect with nature and you connect with this type two fun yeah. and you realize your body will go so much farther oh, yeah. than you think it will. It's your mind that has to kind of get you there. Um, and once you overcome some of this stuff, it, it is life changing. Like yeah. it yeah. really does change the scope of how you want to live, how you want to fuel your body, that the decisions you make, how you want a vacation, um, yeah. Because you want to re-experience that um, that kind of dopamine hit you get from being in the outdoors of that type two fun. Like sure. while you're there, you might be miserable, but then afterwards, you're like, "Oh man, I did that." That was that was the that was the time of your life. Yeah, and yeah. Absolutely. I pushed my body. I pushed my mind. When conditions get tough on a mountain hunt, your gear must be tougher. Making every opportunity count means selecting equipment that will not fail. Any condition. Anywhere, Hornady Outfitter ammunition is designed to perform. Available in a wide range of cartridges from 243 to 375 Ruger. When you're looking for a hard hitting, deep penetrating bullet and cartridge that performs in the most rugged environments, look no further than Hornady Outfitter ammunition. conversation with uh, a gal who babysits for us every now and then and she's in her early 20s I think she's maybe 23 25 something like that she's from the Midwest and uh, one afternoon she was babysitting for us for an afternoon I, I came I went hiking that morning I came back and I was you know just kind of shifting my stuff to go to the office the rest of the day and uh, I was telling her I went hiking and she was you know she was like literally what she said was she's like oh my god like where and i was like oh just there's a you know the mcdowell mountain parks right over here a bunch of trails she's like isn't that scary and she's like you're gonna get eaten by a mountain lion like it, th there was it, it kind of hit me pretty like like wow i didn't realize people are afraid yeah well we are in such a bubble because i think we rub shoulders with a lot of people who are just of like mind we do this kind of stuff we don't give much thought to it but we're in the minority in, in a large way. There's a lot of people out there who, like you said, out of a lack of exposure, they don't know mm -hmm. what they're missing. And thus, you tend to just build up fear complexes about the unknown. And, um, and it's pretty, it's pretty eye-opening when you think about that. I, I had a chance to go uh, hunting this year uh, with a colleague, Peter, and he's worked for Wilderness Athlete for, gosh, like six, seven years now. Yeah. Uh, he's been one of our most valued guys. It does a lot of things from, you know, website development, email marketing, you know, a lot of different things, wears a lot of hats, but he had never been hunting. Um, mm -hmm. And so me and Ben, we tried to take him last year and then it didn't work out. So this year we're like, okay, we're, we're you're going on a hunt, you know, like you've got to kind of connect the dots at this level mm -hmm. and understand what it's all about. And it was so much fun. I, I still have so much more fun going hunting with people who it's like their first time. Mm -hmm. It kind of reminds you of the little things you take for granted and some mm -hmm. of the nuances that 
um, are just special. And, and he had a blast. He had such a good time. And coincidentally, I mean, you know, so did we. We all had so much fun, you know, and it was it was a pretty slow hunt. There it wasn't a lot of action. You know, I, I killed a I ended up killing a deer like the day after he had to go home. Unfortunately, I wanted him to be a part of it. But we still had such a blast just enjoying time in the outdoors. And, um, you know, I think that's it was just kind of a reminder that there's there is a rejuvenating mm-hmm. quality and a, a very unanimous quality, no matter who you are, even if yeah. you didn't grow up doing this stuff. He didn't. You know, no one taught him anything about hunting and stuff when he was a kid. Um, but you step foot on some, you know, bare ground, some mm. dirt, and you have the sun on your face and cold in the morning and you have to deal with all that kind of stuff. Like, you know, we're meant to be out there. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just about exposing yourself to that. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, he wants, I mean, he's all in next year. He wants to actually get a license, get a tag. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to do it again. And hopefully it just sets him on a, a cool trajectory of, of really just engaging with the outdoors more. But Adult onset outdoorsman. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. That is it literally Adult what it is. But you know, like, yeah. I, like I was saying, there's so many people, it's no fault of their own. Uh-uh. No. It's just the the culture to which they were raised or which they grew up, their environment, and you are a product of your environment to many capacities. And yeah. the, the lovely thing is that adults, we have some choice to kind of change that. But, you know, you have to have that inspiration. And being around a good community of people, I mean, the people you surround yourself with really cultivate the seeds that you plant. Like, oh, yeah. and what you what your harvest is. I mean, fr- mm-hmm. from your physical aspects, your lifestyle aspects, everything you do, it's all about the people. I mean, that's what this room is like. What the main things we were talking about at the beginning of the podcast is people. And, and um, boy, I think really cultivating that seed of getting people out is so important for young people, for totally. older people, for everyone, like just to share yeah. the outdoors. And I know hunting is on a decline as a general whole. I really think Western hunting is on an incline, though. It seems like I that. I feel like the Western yeah. hunter, if you will, yeah. um, is it's a growing interest. Like people want to experience the exhilaration from climbing a steep mountain, pushing their bodies and yeah. pushing their minds and really kind of breaking a barrier for themselves that maybe they've not done that before. And mm-hmm. um, and like you said, living without a limit, without putting, you know, a limit on yourself and living longevity. Yeah. And and that's that's what I mean, that's what we're here for. Like literally that's what you guys' company is based on. And it's like I, I mean I love talking about your supplements, but it's not about no. that. No, absolutely not. Yeah, and I'm glad you said that because that's what we try to uh, you know obviously we're a nutrition company and we love supplementation yeah. and we love ing- we love that's our our passion as well but the bigger the bigger message there is what can we do to be just healthier better mm-hmm. people as a whole you know as a society and like we i, I love this whole in insert- this rise of women becoming far more uh in love with getting out there and hunting yeah. and doing it more and there's you see more groups and more you know camps and things for it and I think it's awesome Mm -hmm. you know I think even for in and of itself to get women exposed to hunting and not and feeling more self-empowered to go do that but it also raises the bar for her whole family yeah you know um I've seen a handful of women that I know who it's their husband doesn't hunt their dads didn't they Mm -hmm. just kind of there was something about their life or something that they wanted to put it on their shoulders and, and go out and do um and I think it doesn't have to be hunting you know we, we all love hunting. We all love filling tags, and, and the harvest of an animal is, is great. That That's cool. But being outdoors is, I think, really at the core of yeah. it. And, and that's what Wilderness Athlete is, too. You know, like, mm-hmm. the, and that was when, it, when Mark started this, you know, 20 years ago. That was the idea, you know, is there mm-hmm. was a lot of supplement companies out there at the time catering to the conventional football, basketball, baseball players. Yes. Um, but nothing really speaking to the outdoorsman. And um, that's you know that's that missing piece that you can't really get anywhere else Mm -hmm. it's a pretty unique uh it's a pretty unique supplement if you will just fresh air and and the the natural world so um we see with a lot of our wounded veterans like here especially like the wounded warrior outdoor guys they have a huge presence here and um what they limitations that they may have thought they had you know injury post-war whatever they're dealing with it's it's really therapeutic to watch the transformation that those guys have made yeah um and you know i mean we've seen ron raboud is the founder and he's passed away and his legacy is just incredible that you know he showed a lot of these men and women what they are capable of and the outdoors is so healing for that like it shows you really like 
you can do this. You belong here. You are capable and, you know, you, you can adapt and overcome anything out there. Yeah. It's, it's really incredible the things that we've seen, you know, um, you have men carrying other men up to the tops of mountains, know. you know, and know. you have people that are, you know, Kirsty, like amputees that are climbing Mount Everest. And, um, you know, you see all of these things happening and, and in, then you have all these other demographic of people that are in a chronic disease state and they stay on their couch and they're that their limbs all work and their bodies are, yeah. you know, they're choosing to, to poison them and, and really not do anything about it and then you have this whole other group of people that are like no we're limitless we're going to go do this and it's really comes down to a choice every day that we make yeah. do you want to live in a diseased state and this is a like super like dramatic and extreme <laughs> example um but you do you want to live in a diseased state and be on your couch and be unhealthy or do you want to get with it and yeah. get get healthy eat better foods get control of your metabolic health and and have longevity have vitality have you know, your active life and be able to go do things. And, you know, so much of depression is a B de vitamin deficiency, you know, and D vitamin deficiencies. And, you know, these things we can help supplement with food and, you know, sunshine and fresh air and, yeah. you know, the, the mental state of being outdoors is vastly improved just from being indoors, you know, so getting off your couch even if it's for a 10 minute walk, my God, it can make a yeah. huge difference in your life. Sure. You sure. know, set yeah. a small goal one step at a time because nobody climbs a mountain, you know, in a blink of an eye. It's one foot after another, after another and repetition and not quitting. And, and yeah. we all have a place to start. And, you know, you can be in really bad shape and, and be like, man, I'm really down on myself right now. But if you make that step every day, you can improve your health and your life oh, um, sure. no matter what you have going on. Yeah, like you said, it's a choice. Um, I think that's where people forget. They're like, I have a choice. Yeah. And this, you see a lot of people, not necessarily the people in this room, and some of them are, but they're letting life happen to them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, you kind of just you enter this mode. That they're you get victims, stuck not in. victors. Yeah, and, and you just get stuck in this uh, just view of the world where life is happening to you, and you're mm -hmm. just kind of hanging on, and you're living from one thing to the next and seeing where it takes you uh, rather than feeling in control yeah. of your life, your health, your energy, your mm -hmm. where your career is going. Um, you know, it, there's just a difference between thriving and surviving. That's that I right. think it's easy. I'm not saying, that it, you know, we people listening to this might think, oh, God, they, then something they'll all figure it out. It sounds like it's so easy. And it's certainly it's not. not. You know, you can get in a rut and no. you can get you get kind of desensitized to some of these things because it's, you've been in that place so mm -hmm. long. Um, and that's that's sad, but it, and I guess to a lot of people listening to this podcast, that it's to find somebody in your life that you have an it's impact prayer. on, and and just hype them up, you mm -hmm. know, just help them see what they're missing, mm -hmm. and help them maybe take more control over their life rather than feel like life is just happening to them. Or if you're that person you know. that feels like life is happening to them and you're in a dark place, yeah. find somebody that shines some light on your life. Sure, yeah. You know, find other people that are living positively because it's really easy to get stuck in that, that down bandwagon. If you're yeah. around people that are also being unhealthy and doing and making lifestyle choices that are, that are not the best for you mentally or physically, Break those chains and find people that will inspire you and that you can grow with and, yeah. and be a part of that. I mean, that's really, a, I mean, I look at it all the time. I listen to tons of podcasts and, you know, I try to find people on social media that I can look up to and be like, look, these people inspire me. Um, I'm motivated by them. They make me want to be a better version of myself and reach out to those people. Sure. Like, and if you are one of those people, you know, there's always somebody you can look up to still. Like, no one's ever, I don't think, at the top. No, um, no. Because everybody is going to, you mm -hmm. know, pull, pull in their boots on the same way. You know, we, we all need that from time to time. Some sure. days we're the leaders and some days, you know, we need a hand up. Yep. Yeah. There's givers and takers, right? Yeah. You're either one of those two people. And yeah. You just try to, like you said, surround yourself with more of those givers yeah. than, than takers. And mm -hmm. um, this this group of people in this room, there's a lot of people just giving a whole lot of energy. And that's mm -hmm. what's the most fun about these expos, these trade shows, is just having that FaceTime, that interaction mm -hmm. with not only you know customers, but also just peers in the industry yeah. that 
uh, you don't get to see face to face too often, you share emails with, but there's just a whole lot of energy. And so whether you're not even passionate about hunting or, or whatever your thing is, just find some people that are kind of in that tribe yeah. and just build that tribe. And, and you'll just be surprised about how life starts to unfold for you, mm-hmm. the momentum you build. Um, and health and everything. Yeah. For sure. Amen to that. And I, yeah. I love this group for that. I love the WA family for that. And if you guys haven't tried Wilderness Athlete products, I mean, you guys have been around for 16 years now? Uh, 20, almost 20. I think year, year 19, I think it is. Okay. I always lose track. It's Closing. 2004. Okay. Yeah, 2004 was when we were founded. So. It's a long yeah. time. Yeah. A long time. And you guys have um, incredible products. And, and I can attest that, you know, what is on the label is actually in the product, um, which is, you know, separates you guys from a lot of different companies. You're not private labeling your products. I mean, what makes you guys really stand out is you guys have, you know, the, you know, cause these supplements aren't FDA regulated, but what is in your label is in the product. And that's, you know, rest assured with that. And, yeah. It's formulated by people that have your vision in mind. It's not just something that you guys are buying and private labeling. This is formulated for your goals, for your customers, and for where your brand and your company yeah. are going. Yeah, I think the thing that separates us in a large way is there's so many supplement companies out there, Tons. you know, of course. And uh, there's a lot of decisions that companies make, um, and you have a lot of opportunities to make decisions on where to, you know, cut corners and improve the bottom line. Mm-hmm. Um, and that usually is exclusions to making a better product for your customer. Yeah. You know, we always go right instead of left if it means making a better product, even if it means making the, the, pro- the product maybe a little less profitable mm-hmm. or maybe a little more expensive if it's really an extreme sense. Yeah. But we've always gone that direction. Um, it's never bitten us in the ass. We've never regretted making a product more expensive if it ultimately meant mm-hmm. making it better for mm-hmm. the customer. Um, you know, you should be taking it pretty seriously what you're putting in your body. We mm-hmm. do. We take it incredibly seriously. We take a lot of responsibility for handing people stuff that are going to, they're going to rely on this yeah. in the back country or just, you know, they're relying on it to give them an edge and they're relying on it because it's something they're putting into their body. Uh, and that's, we take it very seriously. So, you know, we, we go through a lot of testing. We go to great lengths to make sure we're finding the, the best possible ingredients, um, the best, you know, practices. And, and that tastes good. That tastes good. Yeah. That we, you want to yeah, eat. Yeah, yeah. You want to enjoy. That's key. That's I'm key. not going to yeah. lie. Like, so trade shows, like in our room, I, I have almond milk and I do my protein powder every morning. And then I just... I do uh, in with that I do the collagen and I do the creatine and I drink that every morning but at the show floor I went and just bought like pre-bottled protein drinks because I was like this is just easier than having to try to bring milk and all this stuff and they taste so bad I know yeah (laughs) and I'm like yesterday I was drinking one and I'm like this is garbage (laughs) this is so bad (laughs) every now and then I try try something else you know out of convenience or curiosity and and I'm I'm reminded about how great our our flavor team is and our formulation team is because you know I drink our stuff you know obviously all the time yeah and it's a challenge you know when you're putting in a lot of really unique ingredients and you're trying to make it as well-rounded as possible flavor is obviously something you contend with pretty hard and um, yeah, we, we, we do it really well. We put a lot yeah. of effort into that because if there's not, if there's one thing for sure is that flavor is king. You yeah. Know? You could tell somebody this is going to cure every ailment you've ever had. It's going to make you live 10 if years it tastes, longer. It tastes like crap. Nobody's going to n- do it's it. Not gonna it ain't happening. It's just unfortunately how no, we nobody's are. Nobody's plugging their nose and ingesting it's stuff. the creatures we are for no. sure. But, um, yeah, thank you for saying that. It's, it's a fact. Like I, and I try to try other products and do other things, but you know, you guys do such a good job and, um, like your collagen Yogi puts it in our coffee, but I, I find that I like it a little bit better in my, in my protein shakes, Same. but we also put it in our coffee. Yeah. Um, and that was a new product last year that you guys launched and mm-hmm. it, holy smokes, like much needed, like yeah. the peptide world. It's so controversial in medicine right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm getting into it. Yeah, uh, it's I, so yeah, controversial. I'm really kind of diving into it, mainly because I've got an injury that I'm trying to rehab. That's an old yeah. one from an old surgery that I had a long time ago in football. And uh, I don't want to have surgery again. You no. know, I'm not trying to get back onto the football field. And I don't want you to go through all that. And yeah. it's, it's not that bad. But I definitely have uh, been paying a lot more attention and doing a lot mm-hmm. more reading about peptides. Uh, but yeah, like, like collagen peptides, you know, there's a lot of collagens out there. And I think yeah. the majority of the, the market has always gone toward just the general hair, skin and nails yes. benefit. And Which I'm not complaining no, about. No, no, absolutely <laughs> not. Um, but. But you can make it a little bit more advantageous as well for yeah. some of those ligament 
uh, like collagen, I think six and and I think it's six and nine or six and ten. I always forget uh, which. Nobody one is. knows the difference actually listening. So the, you yeah. could you could say six <laughs> and it's X Y Z. We would agree. A couple we add that are more advantageous yeah. towards uh, ligament health. And yeah. so you know, recovering from injuries, uh, more athletic types of, of damage mm-hmm. to the body. It'll, it's a lot more beneficial in those areas as well, mm-hmm. a- along with the hair, skin, and nails, yeah. uh, you know, benefits too. So, um, yeah, it, we're that's the beautiful part about like the world we live in now is like we're constantly finding new ways to improve things. ourselves. Yeah. Well, when you mentioned leucine and the value of leucine um, in your body metabolically, and our BCAAs, you know, leucine, isoleucine, and valine are three amino acids. They're animal derived amino acids, and that's in our BCAAs. Mm-hmm. And that also, I mean, that. That is a gangbuster after post workout, you know, in in supplementing those BCAAs. If you, especially if your protein intake isn't where it needs to be or isn't yeah. on point, I mean, yeah. these are ways that we can offset these uh, deficiencies that we have from our diet. And I mean, those are so like for me and Yogi, like the last twelve months, uh, my focus has really shifted um, collagen. BCAAs, but heavy creatine. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then he is a huge hydrate and recover guy. He's like everyday hydrate and recover. I don't hydrate and recover every day. I don't feel like I need it every day, but the days that I need it, I drink hydrate mm-hmm. and recover. And then we are big hero fans. Yeah. Like, yeah. because I, in the back country, especially, um, I run a little low energy. Yeah. I get a little tired because I'm not eating necessarily as frequently as I should be eating or on point. And so I do have those, like I was talking about, those metabolic slumps in the afternoon a lot. And we live on those things. And I love the you guys, the hero drinks are in a disposable kind Mm -hmm. of a container. And what I love about those is we can put the water in there, drink them, we can reuse them. Yep. And then I'll have a smelly water bottle. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a smelly water bottle that smells like vitamins. It's it's nice. And I mean, so there's these things that we, you know, that we've now incorporated into our lifestyle. Yogi's really big on joint advantage because he's really struggling yeah. with his joints hurting. I don't experience that as much. Yeah. I used to have really painful hips. For whatever reason, they don't bother me anymore. So mm-hmm. he's all, I mean, he's all in on supplementing joint advantage, uh, good stuff with all our fish oil yes. for his joints. and Yeah, so, so so am I. I mean, look, Yogi and I were just talking about this yesterday because we're, we're both like dealing with creaky sore yeah. joints. And, and you're 33, yeah. please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, 34. Yeah. I, I've been pretty hard on my body yeah. through sports my whole life, and I think I'm, you know, and whether this is like a normal progression of that or I'm just trying to get ahead of it, and so maybe I'm a little bit more aware of it. Um, regardless, everyone has their own For sure. ailments, their own pain yeah. points, and, you know, the beauty of what we do, um, and a, a lot of companies do, we're not the only uh, health company out there that's doing it well, um, but we're trying to solve a problem. We're not yeah. going to develop a product that's really just for a marketing angle or no. to make money. If we if, if we can't answer the question, what problem does this solve for people? And it usually starts with one of us. We've yeah. got a pretty we've got a pretty wide uh, selection of people in our mm-hmm. office from men and women who have in all stages of life and health. So if we can't say like, yeah, this is really perfect to help this per- mm-hmm. you know, for, for that one thing. Then, then what's the point of it? You know, yeah. that's what supplements are for—is mm-hmm. to help you know get you over that slump, whether it's energy, metabolism, you know, joint pain, appetite muscle, suppression, appetite lean life, suppression, mm-hmm. uh, hydration, cramps, um, mm-hmm. you know, you name it. Um, yeah. So there's a, if we're not solving a problem, then it's not worth our time. So, no. it, it just obviously that ends up being something that's really successful, anyways. Like if you can't, if you can't, if it's not doing anything for anybody, it's just what's the point of doing it? Yeah. No. So. And, and there seems to be a lot of um, a lot of like health trends and things that kind of come and go, but there is some tried and true things that have performance and science in the test of time behind them. And you guys are doing a great job of growing what you guys are doing. I mean, obviously you started with hydrate and recover and these, these protein bars, <laughs> yeah, uh, like meal replacement type bars. Yep. And you guys have expanded into so much more. And it's, it's been such a pleasure to be part of that journey, but also see the niches that you're filling that, you know, before, um, I remember like when I was bodybuilding, in my 20s, you know, I had to go buy creatine at a GNC or BCAAs yeah. at a GNC. You guys have them now. And I, I know now what I'm taking is as good as it gets. Yeah. Like, I mean, you guys' stuff is 
top of the line and I can buy that through a company that supports my lifestyle. And I really believe there's in this like superpower in the purse. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we want to spend our money with the companies and the people that are like-minded and support our values and traditions. And that's one of the reasons I'm so proud to work with the WA family. Um, Because you guys are truly take a health perspective but it comes from care and concern oh yeah like you guys aren't here like a profit center you're no. here because you guys want to be better as individuals and parents and, and yeah. husbands and wives and you know i mean that's we want to have better experiences and a better life and um i really respect that thank you yeah I, w- one of the best examples of that is our working athlete division yeah. which we started gosh like eight years ago now I, i've always lose track of time right now but um that is a, pro- a part of our business that has been tremendous and grown tremendously because we're making a big difference for blue collar workers mm-hmm. um, and it, all over the country. And that's been really, really uh, awesome. And, and really, it, 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 it's a type of environment where if we made a product that wasn't genuinely actually making a difference in the safety and health of these guys, yeah. uh, we wouldn't stick around. We couldn't last. Yeah. You know, that, that's where health and safety is, is, is less of a game, you mm-hmm. know. It's there's it's life and death for a lot of these guys. That well, are, and that's why you guys yeah. started the rescue. Yes, yeah, that was where that one came from. It was more of like an acute hydration. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're on, you're facing heat stroke, heat mm-hmm. illness, like when you're really in a really bad way. Um, it has a total huge application for hunters as well. Well, it doesn't even parties. have to be hot. No. Like two oh, years no. ago, Yogi yeah. and I packed my elk in Wyoming off the mountain, and it was it was cold. Like there was there was snow in the shadows still. You know, it was cold. Yeah. And we came off the mountain at like 1230 at night and he was like starting to cramp and really kind of going downhill. We hadn't had enough water. And um, we got back to our side by side and we had a a hero in the truck Uh or in the side by side. And I was so grateful because just that got him over it. Yeah. Um, And through that, I mean, because like I, my cameraman, Nick, he went down one time and it was bad from not enough water. And, you know, you get this electrolyte imbalance and. It is truly a safety concern, which is why sure. so many of these companies are now, um, you know, power companies and you know, yeah. these big, you know, paving companies and stuff really are putting a lot of concern in because people are working in conditions where if they're not taking care of their staff, their staff has sure. major, it means a major medical problems. Yeah. Um, but your rescue, walk everybody through the difference on rescue and hydrate and recover because there's not a lot of people that really know, right. you know, rescue kind of works hand in hand with hydrate and recover. Yeah. And when do you use that product? Yeah, that's so we developed rescue hydration for it's an additive to hydrate and recover. So it's not meant to be standalone. You can yeah. totally drink it standalone and it tastes great and it's got good electrolytes. But um, you're really meant to use that as like if you're, like I said, either severely dehydrated. Yeah. Uh, you feel like you've already got that heat stroke onset. You've got that nausea. You're vomiting. You're, you're not sweating, but you feel like you're losing that color in your skin. Yeah. Um, that's for that acute dehydration symptom that you're trying to bounce back from, either get back to the truck or just get home. Yeah. Um, also, if you're ex- extremely hungover, it's, we, we added an ingredient in there, al- aloe, it's powdered aloe gel powder, essentially. Um, really good for so stom- stomach nausea. So that in and of itself is like... Is this what you're giving out? Saturday yeah, night. Yeah, we're giving that and <laughs> hydrate and recover. I love it. It's a it's truly a hangover cure. Like if you That's drink great. if you drink that mixture, hydrate and rescue together before you go to bed if you're drunk. Drink that right before you go to bed. Um, and then maybe another one when you get up, you'll feel like a new person. You um, just hit absolutely. the 20s market, like yeah. nailed it, right? Yeah, <laughs> and we're not, you know, we, we were, yeah. w- when we started developing that, we were like, okay, you know, we've got the core tenants here of something that's going to be a great hydration product, but what else can we add? So the coconut powder uh, that we added to it is a way for us to add more, you know, potassium to mm-hmm. it, which is really, really helpful. But the uh, aloe gel powder in there is is almost strictly for the benefit of someone who's hungover. Um, it does help with some mental, like cognitive function, mm-hmm. um, and nausea. So I mean, those are things that are symptoms of severe heat illness as yeah. well. But more commonly, you find that with just a severe hungover. hangover. <laughs> <Yeah>, so <laughs> let's be honest. Yeah, most people are hungover more often than they yeah. get heat stroke. <laughs> so you can use that, like I said, after something big. I mean, but even pre, you know, like yeah. if you know, man, this is going to be an ask. It's like a of pre-funk a party. Yeah, thing. just get yourself preloaded with a, it. Basically, doubles the electrolyte profile of hydrate and recover, as well as some really important stuff in there as well for. Uh, general heat illness uh, functions. So there's astaxanthin, which helps you become resistant to, you know, heat stress. Um, 
things like that. So it, it, it has like a very light lemony coconut flavor mm -hmm. to it. So it pretty much just adds good flavor to anything yeah. you add it to. Um, and it has more salt in it, quite a bit more sodium. Mm -hmm. So it, it'll definitely taste uh, saltier. You know, liquid IV is something that a lot of people use these days because you can find it at every Costco. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of these heavy, heavy electrolyte uh, supplements out there that have so much sodium in them that, um, yeah, they're right for you at the right time, but they're not something you should be drinking on a daily basis yeah. if you have a low active level of, of just lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is something where, yeah, Hydrate and Recover, you can drink that every day of your yeah. life, whether you're sedentary or active, and there's a nutritional benefit to, yes. you know, to it. But it's for those, you know, extra big days, those those extra mm -hmm. high caliber hikes, those, uh, you know, those things that adding that rescue hydration will really come in for you. Um, yeah. And, and we, it's something everybody should have in their pack. It weighs oh, absolutely yeah. nothing. Yeah. We, we've heard a lot of stories, mm -hmm. especially at this this type of show where, like, someone will come up and tell us, man, Hydrate Recover literally saved my life. Yeah. Um, and it, that's great to hear. Um, this this added product is just going to Im improve that too. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we you know we're based in Arizona, so we deal with the heat. heat of the heat. You know, and we deal with it all the time. Um, but it doesn't take the heat all the time. It, it, uh, heat illness, heat stroke, real severe dehydration can sneak up you uh, on you from you know even severe cold. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, being prepared, like you said, just having a couple of these in yeah. your pack, even if it's not for you, if it's for your buddy, that's right. you'd be glad you had it. It's a lifeline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, a, it's surprising, like, you know, as much as like, I, like we pack this stuff, but sometimes at the right time you, you're like, man, I don't have this or mm -hmm. we drank it yesterday yeah. and I didn't refill my pack last night because uh -huh. I forgot. And it's easy to do. Right. And so having maybe like a system to, um, you know, Yogi is really good about having a system and, and you know we just make sure everywhere we go we bring we have <laughs> like this gear bag you guys started doing duffel bags yeah super awesome because we put everything in our duffel bags <laughs> yeah. and that's what we pack like yeah. all of our uh, supplements in but like the big containers yogi dumps them out into ziploc bags so yeah. it makes it a little easier for traveling and um but you know it's just become or i, I don't even say become i mean i've been this part of this family for 14 years almost yeah. it's crazy yeah. um and i can't imagine now everything like i said that you guys are making and manufacturing like i can't imagine you know going anywhere else or, or yeah. using another product because your guys is just so good and it does fit so many aspects of our lifestyle that yeah. really fills a big benefit in a in a different hole or a different yeah. deal Thank my you. dog's even on the probiotic yep he has, line, yeah i'm telling you like his stomach is jacked and I sprinkle that in his food and like you can tell when he's not feeling good and man, I just put him on that full time now and it's been great. Yeah. Like awesome. Yeah. Our canine, uh, we actually just last, this last week we were having a, we had a meeting about canine athlete. It's a, it's a product line we started, you know, three, four years ago. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately it tends to get a little bit, le it gets less attention than the rest yeah. of our product line, you know, in, in. It, we made it because we're just, we, we all love dogs. Everyone yeah. in this office has like numerous dogs, and we and love it to see. And it smells like the dogs are going to want to eat it too. <laughs> yeah. Like when you open they it, you're it. like, "Oh, the dog's going to like this." They <laughs> love it. Yeah, and and we started it because you know you want to be able to do the most you can for your best friend, yeah, that's right. and especially dogs that are getting older mm, and dogs that have hip problems, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, it, it's really rewarding, and yeah. not that it's just about the reward, but to be able to do something for a dog yeah. that makes an actual difference. Um, so we're going to put a lot more emphasis on that this year. Mm -hmm. um, just you know, more focus, just more energy into it, more yeah. marketing and such. So they will probably work with you on that as well. Yeah. Um, I have an old dog. <laughs> Perfect. And I'm <laughs> probably going to get divorced this year because I'm also getting a puppy, which my husband uh -oh. doesn't want. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm moving in the opposite <laughs> direction. We've got two dogs, and we're, like, ready for a dog-free house for a while. Yeah. Uh, it's, we love dogs, but, you know, they You can. have a baby now, though. Yep. See, I'm mm -hmm. 44, no kids. <clears throat> yeah. And I love my little dog died last year and yeah. I miss that arm yeah. feeling like I miss having my little dog in my arms and packing her around and now see if we get a dog it'll be a small dog yeah we, because we've got three big dogs they're and giant well uh, my big my big dog's as big as me <laughs> literally yeah. like I tell him I'm like mama want to hold you like baby yeah. and he sits <laughs> in between my legs he's like 110 pounds he's like literally as big as me Ruger? Kruger yeah Kruger, and yeah. He, I'm like he's giant but you know like I miss having like that little baby dog yeah, thing yeah. so that's and different. that's that's just me being a 
really crazy woman <laughs> that doesn't have kids. No, um, it's understandable. But, you know, yeah. I, so. our, last year, we, we put down Otter, and, and you yeah. met Otter. She used to come to the show with us. Yeah. And that was really, really hard. And, uh, you know, watching dogs uh, deteriorate it's is, terrible. is terrible. And it's just natural. Yeah. Natural part of life, you know. And it's the pet ownership. Yeah, so Canon Athlete was about, um, you know, predominantly new dog. That's really the, the, the hallmark product for us there. But... Um, being able to slow down that that aging process or ease that aging mm-hmm. process, give them a little bit of ease into pain mm-hmm. and um, helping them feel more energetic and yeah. taking care of their coat and their skin and mm-hmm. things like that. Um, it's a really, it's it's a fun project and it's, it's fun to take dogs like that are in that, those older years, those senior dogs um, and watching them in a, in a week's time change change, you know and because they don't know one thing from the other they just know they have a tasty Mm -hmm. powdery you know thing on their food and it the the results don't lie um and that's that's always just been like a fun passion project Mm -hmm. for us but i think it's this year we're going to put a lot more effort into that i'm excited for that i'm excited to see where that goes especially as my dog he's going to be 11 this year and i just he really is slowed down so yeah it's nice to see you guys care about the whole family yeah of course yeah Exactly. I appreciate you, Kevin, for being here and, and um, for taking the time to talk to everybody a little bit about the heart and soul that's behind the brand. Yeah. And course. hopefully, you know, if all of you watching, go online, go to the wildernessathlete.com website, um, check out everything WA. I have a discount code. It's <laughs> Titus20, T-I-T-U-S 20. I'll save you 20% on an order, but they're always running great specials anyway. So go on there, sign up for their newsletter, Get on, you know, subscribe to the journal. You guys are going to want to hear everything they have coming out, things that are going. They've got some cool stuff they're coming out with later this year we can't talk about yet, but I'm really excited about, which really just ties into the health family that Wilderness Athlete has created. And um, so I want you guys, if you're not uh, part of our family, join us. Try us out. Like, yes. try it out. Try out the products and, and see if you like them for yourself because I, I think you're going to love them. Yeah. And, um, Kevin, thank you so much oh, again for your thank time. You for me. And, uh, yeah, we will all catch you all at another episode of the Wild Nine Cut podcast. And if you guys like this podcast, please like, subscribe, share. We would not be here without all of you that are listening. So we really, really appreciate you and couldn't do it without you and our great partners like Wilderness Athletes. Thank you. I appreciate that so much. All right. We'll see you all next time. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.